What's happening everybody, it's your boy Jimmy James 59 and today I'm going to be doing a another revision of a tier list I did about a year ago. Last week I looked at, actually it was two weeks ago, I looked at best one of you on Cavalry Civilizations. And today, going back in the vault and I'm reviving another tier list, best 1v1 Archer Civilizations. Now, this tier list I think is a little bit more difficult to do in some ways than the Cavalry tier list just because the archery range and the roles of archers I think have a lot more variation across the various unit types in the game and so when we think about the archery range holistically we're actually thinking about a lot of different functions right we're thinking about foot archers which tend to be a more like cost efficient mainline gold unit that's used to uh, kill other units and uh, you know win sort of military battles but also destroy your opponent's uh, villagers etc not really as good against buildings or that kind of thing but that differs very markedly from skirmishers which are meant to well counter other archers and then you have cavalry archers which tend to be a unit that actually i think the function often changes within games right in castle age uh, because of the range it's not a unit that you can really use to to pin down town centers because you only have six range and so that can be kind of tough but you use it kind of as a raiding option however once you get to imperial age the units actually if you can get all your upgrades it can be pretty tanky it can actually be a really durable unit that you can even I use against knights and camels and that kind of thing. And maybe even against other foot archers if you have all your armor upgrades. But not only that, you also have the hand cannon here, right? And the hand cannon here is an anti-infantry specialist. So we have a lot of uh, a lot of roles across the, the archery range. And for that reason, I actually think there's no civ in the game that really has an F-tier archery range, right? There were some cavalry civilizations that I definitely think are in the F-tier. But for the archery range itself, I, I think that every archery range has at least some kind of role that a unit from there can perform. So what that means here is like the D tier is not a tier that's just like, oh, you're in the bottom tier, you know, like never even make an archery range. No, it's not really that simple, right? The D tier are for your archer civs that the usage is just a lot more situational. So you have to keep that in mind. And I'll say also that civilizations in this tier list that go into the S tier don't also necessarily have to have all of the functions of an archery range. That's one thing we might consider. We can consider that versatility, but we can also consider some civilizations that have that have maybe a particular kind of archer that is just so overwhelming from a strategic perspective that it gives you a massive advantage. And so we're gonna try and balance that versatility and specialization together in this tier list the last thing i would say on this is that we don't want to think about a civilization's in state in that post-imperial setting as what determines whether a civ is in the s tier all the way down to the d tier because not every game has a post-imperial age in fact a lot of times games are decided well before the post-imperial age even if they make it there and so we have to think about how a civilization's what your opening is, how your mid game is. Maybe if you have a power spike in early Imperial Age, which was a pretty common strategy for a while to go, even like fast Imperial Age archers on one town center, that's been made a bit more difficult with the crossbow and arbalist upgrades being more expensive, but it's still a strategy out there. So we got to keep those kind of things in mind. And that being said, I think that's enough preamble. And let's go ahead and jump into the tier list. And we start off with the Aztecs, which I think is actually a really good example of a civilization that. It's missing some technologies. I'll put them in the B tier because you are missing thumb ring. You are missing the last armor upgrade, but you have a really nice early game economy. You create military units faster and you do have Arbalist with Bracer and you do have the Atlatl technology to give your skirmishers a nice bump in, in attack and range. And so you have some, some options with this sieve. You can have a really strong opening, but you will taper off a bit in the later stages of the game in terms of how much damage you can get on the field and you are missing cavalry archers and hand cannoneers entirely so that's enough there for a b tier now looking at the bengalis here i think something the bengalis are kind of interesting from a range unit perspective i think we got to put them in the b tier as well because they have a number of options in their back pocket as well arbalist with all the upgrades except for thumb ring makes their foot archers fairly well playable that means that your skirmishers are going to be pretty good as well because thumbing doesn't impact skirmishers all that much. And instead of cavalry archers, you have elephant archers, which for the Bengalis, I think if you do get into that late game setting, 
can actually be quite good because you're not taking as much bonus damage. You have a lot of pierce armor, so there's a lot to be said for it. I do think in Castle Age they're a little bit weaker, so I'll hold them back a bit there. And the last thing you have is the Rotha from the castle that can kind of moonlight as a cavalry archer. Um, I think it's a really interesting unit. It's just countered by a lot of things, though I think for what you get, it's actually pretty affordable. So overall, I think Bengalis do make it into that B tier. You just don't have those uh, speedy archer openings that can uh, that can win in Feudal Age. And even in Castle Age, lacking Thumbring, I think, really hurts. And the Pike's technology at the castle is only going to help your Elephant Archers fire faster. And Elephant Archers are notoriously uh, inaccurate as well. So I think you have some weaknesses in the Bengali tech tree. But still, overall, I'd say it's B. Now, if we take a look at the Berbers. The Berbers are a pretty interesting civilization from an archer perspective. And... Honestly, I actually think it's an A tier. You gotta hear me out on this, right? You get fully upgraded crossbows, though you are missing the Arbalist upgrade, so that is a knock. However, your elite skirmishers are fully upgraded. You have the Camel Archer from the castle, which is a really great unit that can not only do bonus damage against cavalry archers, but in general just has a really high damage output. And if you get the Imperial Age technology on it, you can actually regenerate its HP. And it's actually quite a good bonus because it really, you have the mobility to get away from attacks and actually make use of some of that, uh, that regenerative ability. So it's not game breaking or anything, but it's still pretty decent. But to me, if you only took those things, that would be a B tier archer sieve, I think. Maybe B plus, right? But the fact that you have the Genitor as a mobile mounted skirmisher, I think gives the Berbers that added dimension that a lot of other civilizations just don't have, right? You have a skirmisher that can keep up with your army so that if you are dealing with, say, mass spearmen, right, you have a unit that can help take them out and get away. And in general, I think that if you have the economy to support the Genitor, which usually happens maybe a little bit later as the game goes on, because the Berber economy for the most part is pretty generic, I do think that can actually be a strong unit for you to make. So you put that together, and I think Berbers do sneak into the A tier. If we take a look at the Bohemians, right? I think Bohemians are also extremely interesting as well. Um, I think it's close to being an A tier. In fact, I think you do probably have to let them sneak into the A tier because, again, you can do some really unique things. First of all, you have a great economy behind your your Archer Rush because you get all your, your uh, minerals, so gold and stone, mining upgrades for free. You, in the Castle Age, can research chemistry and get those chemistry crossbows, which is, gives you a really, really good damage. It helps you compensate for missing out on Thumb Ring. You can make hand cannoneers in Castle Age. And what I think really makes Bohemians an A tier archer sieve are actually the support units you can surround your archers with. Halberdiers that do extra bonus damage are great for helping keep those archers alive. And then the Hufnisa. I know it's recently gotten nerfed, but I think it's still really strong. You just wind up being able to keep units alive with the civilization. And Bohemians are one of those civilizations that's kind of tough to stop. I think from an archer perspective, we can definitely put it in the A tier. But again, I think kind of like Berbers, it's probably closer to being more of like an A minus because you don't really have cav archers with, with Bohemians, but you have a lot of other options elsewhere. Now, Britons to me are the go-to S tier sieve. Yeah, your cav archers aren't that great. And yeah, you miss hand cannons, but your foot archers are just fantastic. You have so much range. You have the faster producing archery ranges. You have the long bowmen in the castle if you want to go for uh, basically the best foot archer in the game. Then you have skirmishers that are also fantastic as well. You have a ton of great support units in pretty okay light cavalry. Skirmishers that can get extra range and have all their armor upgrades. With Britons, right, it's about, it's, it is all about foot archers, but man, they're really overpowering. So I think for that reason, you got to put them in the S tier. You have two really nice eco bonuses that are helping you get that faster rush going and also uh, still be able to make crossbows in the mid game while also booming. It's just fantastic. Easy S tier. Now with the Bulgarians, I think we got to put Bulgarians in the D tier, sadly. However, it's worth keeping in mind that the heavy cavalry archer is definitely viable for the civilization. You're only missing the last armor upgrade and you get your blacksmith upgrades cheaper on the food cost. So if you need it, it actually is not the most difficult transition. And you do have the faster attacking Hussars after you research stirrups to support heavy cav archers. So you actually have a really, I'll just say underrated 
heavy cab archer hussar play if that's a comp you want to go for and so you want to keep that in mind that you know the archery range can give you some value with bohemian or with, with bohemians i mean it can give you value with bohemians but it can give you value with the bulgarians as well i'll take a look at the burgundians i think burgundians are i think they're a d tier archer sieve but it's again kind of like bulgarians it's worth noting that you do have very strong hand cannoneers, and that's worth considering. But again, hand cannoneers are just a very situational unit. In the same way that heavy cavalry archers are kind of situational, hand cannoneers you really only want to be making if you're seeing massive infantry on the field, which you might, given that you're probably making cavalry with this sieve. But on the other hand, you might also want to make skirmishers, and skirmishers are just kind of okay. So overall, I think it's a D tier. This is a lot more of a cavalry civilization. Taking a look at the Burmese. Burmese is kind of tough. I think, again, it's another D tier sieve, though. You do have the Arambai as kind of like your one option. And Arambai are pretty good, though. I would say a little situational, just in that you're pretty easily countered by foot archers, skirmishers, that kind of thing. Just because as a civilization, you're missing that uh, not only the last archer armor upgrade, but even the Castle Age one. And that means that your crossbows and skirmishers fade really, really fast. So, again, you have one option, and basically every every uh, sieve in this D tier list has at least like one option they can go for. And with Burmese, it's a Rombai, which you only make from a castle. So, I think sometimes it can be hard to get there. Um, probably easier on like closed maps where you have the the sort of uh, freedom to to mine stone without being uh, without you know running into troublemakers. On Arabia, it can be a little bit more difficult. Now, if we're going to think about the Byzantines, I think Byzantines are actually extremely interesting. I think it's close between A and B tier. I think I'm going to put them in the A tier. Just because fully upgraded Arbalest, cheaper skirmishers, and cannoneers to get all the upgrades. You have a lot of great options. You're just missing the Cavalry Archer. You have a cheaper Imperial Age to help you get to some of those better options. I'm not going to lie, right? I think Byzantines are actually really kind of up there in that A tier. Um, they often play out as an archer civilization, and at the end of the day, right, that fast imperial age, I think, you know, I think it would be unquestionably an A tier before the, the change to the crossbow and arbalist uh, cost upgrades, but I think is still an A tier civ, uh, even today. Now with the Celts, taking a look at their archers, it's really, really bad. Um, with Celts, you don't really have a good archer unit, but what you do have is a good eco bonus, that lets you go for a strong archer rush in the feudal age and so that's the really the one thing that you can do with celts with archers that can actually be pretty strong so don't be afraid to go men and arms into archers or even just go straight archers with celts but know because you're missing thumb ring bracer arbalist the last armor upgrade etc etc your arbalist are going to fall off the map pretty quickly now, next we get into the Chinese, and this might be a bit of a surprise, but I'm gonna put Chinese in the S tier. I think Chinese can really do it all. You have really great early game eco to where you can get a nice archer rush pretty quickly. You can get all your technologies a little bit cheaper. You have fully upgraded Arbalest. You have fully upgraded Skirmishers. You have heavy cavalry archers that are only missing Parthian tactics. So they're pretty playable, especially now that the heavy cav archer actually does more bonus damage to spearmen, right? That was a recent change. Parthian Tactics, which is still valuable because of the armor it gives you, it's actually, you're not getting the majority of your spearmen uh, bonus damage from that. You're actually getting your majority of that bonus damage from the Heavy Cavalry Archer upgrade. And I think that's a major boost actually for uh, those civilizations that get all your armor upgrades at the blacksmith for your Heavy Cavalry Archers, but you're just missing Parthian Tactics, right? But on top of that, right, you also have the Chukonu, which is a really great foot archer unit. Um, firing multiple arrows, it can actually help your, it can actually help you take out siege pretty decently. And so, when I think of the Chinese tech tree, I just don't see anything that you're really weak in. I think have, between fully upgraded like cavalry and fully upgraded hussars, again, that you're able to research everything cheaper. I just think you have great support units to go along with it as well. And there's really not a phase of the game where with the Chinese that you're either you know missing uh, archers and a role that you need and you have pretty high quality options so unlike the Brit unlike the Britons right which just have you know really really you know strong option in the foot archers I think Chinese make it into the S tier in terms of their extreme versatility and their quite frankly insane eco 
When we take a look at the humans, I think humans are a D tier archer civilization. The unit that you have are the Kipchaks. And Kipchaks are quite strong. Um, well, I mean, they're not a perfect unique unit. They're kind of squishy in Castle Age, but they're, but they're cost efficient. They have some things going for them. They're pretty good against Siege. But other than that, right, you're missing Bracer, so your Skirmishers really fall off. It's tough to really dig in deep with Cav Archers with this Civ. I just think ultimately you have the one option, Kipchaks. That's about it. Now, Dravidians, I think, are incredibly interesting as an Archer Civilization. I'd go ahead, I'd put them in the A tier as well, right? You get a nice eco bonus, giving you extra wood. Your Arbalist are fully upgraded. Your Skirmishers fire faster. This is a really, really nice bonus. It helps you micro the units in a really smooth manner. And it's just going to give you more damage out in the field. And that's something that Skirmishers often tend to, tend to lack. And so um, getting more of that damage out is really fantastic. Now, if you just were going to take those things, I'd say it's a B tier Civ. However... You have the Elephant Archer, and the Dravidian Elephant Archer is really interesting, especially in the Castle Age, because that unit also fires faster as well. And so you have really great damage that you can actually put on the field. Um, you start doing the math on it, and it starts to get a little bit close to even like a knight. And you're doing it from range, and you have a, even if you're missing Bloodlines and Husbandry, you still have a you know, decent bit of HP with Elephant Archers. I think Dravidian Elephant Archers are incredibly interesting. They're my favorite of all the Elephant Archer sieves. And I've actually had a lot of fun playing them. So, um, but you know, taking a sobering sort of assessment and look at it, um, I do think you have a lot of archery range options um, and you have some, you know, I think better than expected trash as well to, to pair with that. So uh, whether it's, you know, getting halberdiers for cheaper that do uh, some extra damage once you research wood steel, light cavalry with wood steel can help get some DPS in the field. And even just being able to get the champions a little bit easier, right? If you want to go for a double gold comp, you can actually kind of do that with Dravidians. So I think it's an easy A tier for me. Now, Ethiopians, and this might be a little bit controversial, but I'm going to put them in the A tier as well. You have fantastic foot archers, right? Um, you know, you could compare them to the Britons as one of like probably one of the, you know, top, you know, top three foot archer civilizations. My problem with the Ethiopians is that that's about it. And it's not as overpowering an option as, say, with the British, because the Britons can outrange enemy skirmishers and outrange enemy onagers in Castle and Imperial Age. And so you have a lot more survivability. But the Ethiopians are doing more damage, but you're not necessarily outranging those units. And archers do so little damage to skirmishers that the extra DPS is, is marginally helpful. But Skirmishers are still going to win that. Additionally, versus Manganels, you can still lose a lot of Manganels uh, to just one shot, right? And that's kind of how Manganels work against Archers. They take out a bunch in one shot, and so it's kind of feast or famine. Whereas a good Britain player is going to be able to micro those Manganels down, no problem. And so the other aspect, too, is that whereas I think Britons have both options at the barracks and at the stable to be able to support their Archers, really when it comes to the Ethiopians, you have... You know, a nice option at the barracks, but other than that, well, I don't know. It's not as good. So, and I think the Britain Eco is just a lot better as well. So, ultimately, I do think that keeps the Ethiopians in the in the A tier. I think that they need a little bit more diversity in their archery range to to really uh, make it into that S tier. But it is close because their foot archers are so strong. Next up, we have the Franks. Easy D tier. Um, you actually really don't have a great range option, though. I think that because your early game Eco is so good. Going like Minute Arms and Archers is actually a pretty decent play for Franks. You, you shouldn't be afraid to do it, but it falls off the map pretty quickly. Taking a look at Egoths as well. Again, I think we see another D tier. Um, you really don't have a great range option, though it is worth keeping in mind that your Skirmishers are only missing Thumb Ring. And you do have Hand Cannoneers, so uh, you have that going for you as well. Other than that, right? I mean, at least you get Bracer, which is something that... Uh, that, uh, that the Franks don't get. So, but overall, you don't have a great option. Taking a look at the Gajaras, again, I think this is another, I think there's a lot of Archer civilizations that really only have maybe one option or so. With Gajaras, I think your best bet is probably playing crossbows in the mid game. I think that there's possibly some potential for Elephant Archers that once you research Kasatrius, I just think you're missing too many armor upgrades on them, honestly, for my taste, and they're still pretty expensive. So, 
the end of the day, I still don't think uh, you have a good ranged option with the Gujaras. I'm taking a look at the Hindustanis. I think you'd have to bump them up in the C tier. Fully upgraded crossbows at least, right? So that's playable in the Castle Age. Fully upgraded skirmishers, very nice as well. You can make that as a unit to accompany your camels. And you also have heavy cavalry archers that are only missing Parthian tactics. So you combine that with a really strong eco bonus and I think you have enough options here. I don't think you really have an option that's incredibly strong. Um, I'd, I'd say this is a B tier archer civilization if they still had Parthian tactics. But without Parthian tactics, I, I just don't see it, right? I think that your your crossbows are just too limited, um, you know, in that you, you're fine in the mid game, but it does feel like you're investing in a unit that is not going to be good in the long run. And it's really kind of, and this has been the case even when the Hindustanis were known as the Indians, it feels like it's either cav archers or bust with this suit. Um, but you know, keep in mind your skirmishers, you do have a nice complement to your, uh, your armies that are likely built around camels. So keep that in mind. Now here comes the Huns, and the Huns I think are one of the toughest civilizations to talk about. I'm going to put them in the A tier though. I think Hun Cavalry Archers are just so good and you have nice Hussars that are made more quickly to support them. I think it's a similar situation to the Britons where you just have one really strong ranged option that if it you get to the right mass, you can take over games with the Huns. Um, People doing things like four or five range openings with their with their cab archers uh, is pretty sick and you have a great eco bonus saving you a lot of wood that helps facilitate that now it's worth keeping in mind though your skirmishers are missing that last armor upgrade your cab archers even though you're getting like this really great discount also missing that last armor upgrade and your crossbows are going to fall off as well so again you have that one really strong option so i don't think we can put it higher than than A tier just because I think that in the mid game, crossbows just tend to be a better unit. I mean, crossbows tend to defeat cav archers in the mid game. So gotta keep that in mind, but uh, but it's still really good. Take a look at the Incas next. Um, I think Incas do have some really interesting options at the archery range. Fully upgraded Arbalest, Slingers, an anti-infantry unit, and fully upgraded Skirmishers. You can actually take the minimum range off of. I just think though that you don't have a great eco bonus propelling you towards any of those options. And, you know, I could compare it with a sieve like the Byzantines and where I would say that I would put the Byzantines at that higher tier above is I think it's the cheaper Imperial Age. I think it's getting to that cheaper comp. I think cheaper skirmishers are better than skirmishers that have less minimum range. I mean, if you have if you have units in your within one range of you with skirmishers, like you're already dealing with a lot of problems. So, um, yeah, I think I think a civilization like Byzantines is just kind of categorically distinct. And so because of that, we, you know, I think that Incas can go in the in the B tier, but you do have a stronger opening with the Incas, I believe at least, uh, with the uh, houses, you know, taking double the population space, and it can help you out a decent bit. Now, next up, we have the Italians. The Italians, I think, are Italians are kind of tough here to think about as well. Um, I mean, basically, it's at least a B tier, and I think it's. It's almost A tier. It's pretty close to A tier. For me, Italians... For me, Italians, though... This might be controversial, but I'm going to put them in the A tier. You have a ton of options with this sieve in that you have fully upgraded Arbalist that can get extra melee and pierce armor, which is insane. And so you have great Arbalist in the late game, fully upgraded elite skirmishers, Hand cannoneers that you get at a discount. And if you were to give me all that, right? And with the cheaper age up bonuses helping you with some of your openings and your mid-game transitions, and also your cheaper ballistics and chemistry. I mean, honestly, is there an argument for S tier for this sieve? The one thing you're missing, I think, is that you don't have a mobile option. That you can go for and i don't think that your arbalists are as overpowering as britain arbalist because the extra armor helps tank more damage it's really tough i think because you also have the genoese crossbow which is doing more damage against the cavalry that can be a little difficult to get to and i don't think you have the best support units because the fully upgraded hussars are nice but you are missing halves 
And I do think we want to keep the S tier a pretty exclusive group, but it's really close. I think Italians are extremely underrated just in general, but they're a really nice archer civilization. I think we're going to keep them the A tier for now, though. I think those S tier civs are ones that are just really hard to stop. And I think Italians don't quite have the dominant options, and then they do miss some mobility. So um, a civilization like Chinese, for instance, can go heavy cavalry archers quite easily. I'm actually a little surprised we don't see it more, but uh, that's probably because the Chinese just have so many options in their tech tree that they're just, you know, you know there's just other ways they can they can solve games. And cavalry archers are not uh, really like a, a top of meta strategy in the mid game. If we take a look at the Japanese, I think undoubtedly Japanese from here in the A tier. Fully upgraded Arbalist, fully upgraded Elite Skirmishers, fully upgraded Heavy Cavalry Archers are very nice as well, and Hand Cannons. You have everything you need right at the Archery range, one of only two civilizations in the game to get the complete Archery range with all the Blacksmith upgrades. And you have cheaper resource camps, which really helps out your opening. You have a great Archer Rush with the Civ, but I just think in the late game you do tend to taper off. You don't have the strongest economy. For that reason, I think that we can keep the sieve out of the S tier. But honestly, I'd be willing to almost say it's possibly top of A tier. Maybe it's at least up there, right? It's, it's near the top. Next, we have Khmer. Khmer, fully upgraded. Arbalist only missing thumb ring. Pretty good skirmishers. <laughs> you can try and go heavy cab archers that are only missing thumb ring. Um, seen people do it occasionally it's kind of odd i just don't think you have enough right um i think you could almost make a case for d tier but but i think that the the arbalist line in 1v1 is seen so frequently and the fact that you have a really strong opening with Kamura as well because you don't need the buildings to age up i think that's enough to put them out of that d tier and, and into the c tier now koreans i think are exceptionally interesting and they're going to be another S tier civilization here. Um, the free archer armor upgrades is fantastic for your power spikes. You have fully upgraded arbalists, fully upgraded skirmishers that cost less wood. Both of those units are costing less wood, which is great. But what really sells it for me with the Koreans is that you have a really dominant unit in the war wagon. We're talking about 1v1 games, probably not the best in terms of. Uh, maybe open maps, but in closed maps and maps like Nomad, um, man, War Wagons can, once they get rolling, they can be really tough to stop. And you also have really nice support units with Halberdiers that, that are uh, cheaper on the wood cost. And also the fact that you have really good towers that you can use in support. And Japanese can kind of do that too. Um, I just think, you know, again, comparing civs like Koreans and Japanese, I just think that Japanese lack that extremely dominant option like the war wagon right japanese are really really close um, if i had an a plus tier they'd be in there but koreans war wagons can be can be very very good and if you get to a death ball combination of like war wagons and siege onagers with koreans that's a tough composition to stop lithuanians um i'd, I'd put them in the c tier just because you have fantastic skirmishers and your heavy cavalry archers are only missing parthian tactics but without an eco behind it, I think it's tough. Um, your food gives you a really nice opening, so you can open archers pretty strong, uh, either with men at arms or just straight archers. So it's pretty good, but you, I don't think you have the eco that some of the other better civilizations have, and then you start to run out of options in the late game. Now next up we have the Magyars, and this also might be a surprising pick, but again, another A tier civilization. Fully upgraded Arbalists that have extra line of sight, which I think is a really underrated bonus. I can't tell you how many times I've been in a game, and there's something I see right on the edge of my line of sight with Magyars that provides me an opportunity to go attack, or gives me warning that, say, there's an army skirting around the corner, maybe going to my base, trying to counterattack, and now I'm ready. Uh, but it's not only that. You have some of the best heavy cavalry archers in the game once you get to the late game. Fully upgraded Skirmishers. Great support units. I just think Magyars are... Magyars have one of the most dominant heavy cav archer hussar combinations in the game. For that reason, I think we gotta put them in the A tier. And also remember, right, you can go fully upgraded Arbalist with these guys. Pretty strong. Next up we have the Malay. Malay are kind of B tier. Fully upgraded Arbalist are nice. Fully upgraded Skirmishers are nice. You can get some nice openings, but 
I don't think you have the best eco behind it. Um, you know, you can get to the ages faster. That can cause more difficulty sometimes. So it's kind of tricky, but I think ultimately B tier kind of reminds me of Incas. Malians. Malians, I think, are D tier. I don't think you have a great enduring option. You can play Castle Age Crossbows, but you miss Bracer. So your Arbalists aren't great. You don't really have a great mobile option. You're much more of a cavalry and infantry sip. So ultimately, eh, I just don't think it works. Mayans. Mayans have to go in the S tier for me. Really cheap archers. Really great economy. Skirmishers can get fire the extra arrow, which is fantastic. You have halberdiers to support. Um, your eco is so good that you can go double gold comp with, with eagles. And then you have the plumed archer. That is, once again, it's another one of those dominant unique units from the castle. Um, you'll notice that all these civs in the S tier have really strong unique units from the castle as well. Um, and that, I think that just goes to show you in this S tier that you just have great archer options there. So, pretty darn good. Next up we have the Mongols. And Mongols are tough, man. I think it has to be in the A tier based on the strength of options given that your Arbalists are pretty good, only missing the last armor upgrade. And you have faster attacking cavalry archers and Mangadai. And you just can just you have great openings with this sieve. I actually have on one of my build orders. In fact, I'll put a link to it at the end of this one. I do have an 18 pop archer rush that I've done with the Mongols. Very, very strong. Um and well, maybe not very strong, but very fun at least, right? Um, if you want to give that a try. And I think what takes it down is that your skirmishes are not great in the end game. Your Arbalists do kind of fall behind. And again, Cav Archers are just, I think, a little bit more situational, not exactly a mainline unit. But on the strength of the Manga Diet, you gotta put in the A tier. Persians. Persians are tough. Um, I think that's almost C tier. It's close. I still think we have to put them in the D tier because I do feel like you really only have the one, even though you have hand cannoners, which are fine, but it's the commander and crossbow, AKA the trash bow. I think that is very situational for the Persians because even if you're making crossbows that don't cost any gold, they actually still cost a lot of wood. And so it winds up being a much more of like a late game unit transition. But if you can make that transition, it's a great unit to protect your cavalry line. So especially, say, like, Heavy Cav Archer Command... Uh, not Heavy Cav Archer. Um, heavy Camel Rider Commander Crossbow is really strong. I'd love to see the Persian uh, Cavalry Archers be playable. And I'm going to go out here all Gemster Domus on you. I think that one day Persian Cavalry Archers will be playable. Um, I'll do a video uh, on this, I think, in maybe a few weeks. Talking about uh, some of the... Uh, some of the balance changes, right, that we might predict for the next big patch. And I actually think Persians are going to see one. But, um, again, I'll get to that uh, in a few weeks. Well, next one, we have the Poles. I think Poles have to be C tier. Pretty good Arbalistly missing the last armor upgrade, which kind of ruffles your skirmishers. And then your cavalry archers aren't very good. But you do have pretty good Arbalists, and I think that's it winds up being a great support unit for you. And given that you have the Obu, which can take the armor off of other units, it's actually a really nice unit to pair with ranged units, even, even with skirmishers, because you're going to be doing more damage. So ultimately, I think that that's actually pretty strong. Next up, we have the Portuguese, which... Mm, I think Portuguese are really nice, though I think they're more of a B-tier archer sieve. Um, cheaper archers are, are nice. It's almost enough, I think, to put them into A tier. It also helps your cavalry archers be cheaper, though you're missing heavy cavalry archer and parking tactics. So it's kind of, you know, the stuff to invest in. Ah, uh, you have good hand cannoners in the late game as well. Now you have an early game eco bonus. Okay, I'm sold. I think it's an A tier archer sieve, right? You just have so many options you can go for. You have the versatility. You have the cost efficiency. That sounds like an A tier archer sieve to me. Saracen. Saracens are, again, you can see there's a lot of great archer civilizations in this game. Fully upgraded Arbalists to do extra damage against buildings. Fully upgraded heavy cavalry archers. Fully upgraded elite skirmishers and hand cannoneers. The other civ other than the Japanese to get the full archery range. The market bonus can help for uh, for some, you know, fast crossbow play. 
think it's an eight tier sieve. I just think you're missing a, a dominant option, but you have a lot of options at your disposal. Sicilians, uh, I put them in the C tier. Um, you know, Arbalist with no thumb ring are, are usable at least if you, in the right situations. And the fact that in skirmisher versus skirmisher fights, you take less bonus damage, it's actually pretty good. So you have some nice all in feudal potential uh, with your skirmishers helping you out quite a bit there. But I still think you just don't have any great options. Slavs, D tier, you don't really have a great archer option. And the fact that you your minor arms rush is pretty generic. Um, you don't even have a great minor arms in an archer rush. Uh, honestly, it might be one of the worst uh, archer sieves in the game. And next up, we have the Spanish. I think I'll put Spanish in the B tier as well. Um, cavalry archers that are only missing the last, uh, only missing Parthian tactics, and you can get the blacksmith upgrades does not cost gold, which is really nice. Conquistadors, really dominant cavalry archer unit made from the castles, fantastic. Fully well, upgraded elite skirmishers. Again, your blacksmith upgrades are helping you out there. Hand cannoneers that uh, fire faster. I mean, you just have a lot going for you with the sieve, but. Critically, you are missing crossbow and arbalist. I think that, that just makes your opening really awkward with the sieve. And you don't really have a nice eco bonus. So I think that's got to keep them out of the A tier, even if you have multiple archery range options. Next up, we have the tatters. And speaking of some options here, I think tatters are actually an A tier sieve. Your cavalry archers are very smooth, getting a lot of free upgrades. Uh, extra pierce armor as well. That seven pierce armor makes them really difficult to deal with. And the fact that they get so many things for free is just very helpful as well. Top three heavy cav archer hussar combination, but the free thumb ring also gives you a great power spike with your crossbows in the mid game. And so you have a mid game foot archer option that's actually stronger than a lot of other civs options in that way. For me, that's enough to put them in the A tier along with their uh, fully upgraded elite skirmishers as well. Really nice sit. Teutons, uh, D tier. I mean, so it's with Slavs in terms of the archery range, though. I think Teutons, I'd say, are better just because you do get, I believe, fully upgraded hand cannons. So you at least have that going for you, and that's probably what you're going to make more often than not with the Teutons. Next up, we have the Turks. Turks are. I think Turks have to be a C tier. Top three cavalry archers. And the gold mining bonus helps you get them. Actually, you know what? We gotta put them in the B tier. I'm gonna tell you exactly why. Janissaries and hand cannons are really strong with the sieve. You have a really nice power spike getting that free chemistry. Gonna help your cav archers, gonna help you make hand cannons. Your hand cannons have more HP. You I believe make gunpowder units faster, etc. etc. But you're missing Arbalist. And you're missing the elite skirmisher, which is a major, major downgrade to your mid game. Elite skirmishers uh, are a common sight on the battlefield. And the fact that you miss that with Turks is really unfortunate. So I think you can't put them in the A tier because they have a major flaw, but no, right? That you have some, you do have some nice ranged options with this civilization. Vietnamese for me are S tier. You have nice bonuses in the early game. Knowing where your, your opponent's going to be can be really nice for, for um, I mean, whether it's peace of mind or planning an attack or scouting an attack, I think it's a great bonus. The eco upgrades not costing any wood. It helps you crank archers out. Extra HP on your archers is fantastic. Uh, you have some of the best cavalry archers of any civilization because you have extra HP on them. And then you have the rattan archer at the castle. Again, you see this again, right? All these civilizations have an extremely strong archer option. And honestly, of all the archers in this this bunch, you can make a case that the Rattan Archer is actually the strongest archer of the Esther civilizations. You have a nice late game with really durable units, uh, paper money technology. If you want some gold, really strong suit. And last, but not least, but also not great, are the Vikings. I'll tell you guys, I'm going to put them in the C tier. Arbalist missing thumb ring. And that's about it. You have a nice eco, and to me, that really saves them from falling into the D tier. But your range options are not great. I think missing thumb ring for this civilization was a big nerf. Again, putting on my Jim Stradamus hat, I think thumb ring is going to be restored someday. Um, we're looking out for you, Vikings, right? One day, the, uh, the Vikings will have thumb ring again. I'm calling it right here. 
But uh, but ultimately, I think that Vikings have been kind of power prepped a bit, and they just feel really slow to play with their army. And I just don't think the Berserks are the best support unit for your Arbalist. So it's kind of a bit of trouble there. And that's the tier list. As you can see, um, it's kind of a bimodal tier list where not a lot of sieves in the S tier, and really not a lot of sieves that are just kind of like mediocre. You have a lot of sieves that have really good archer options, and then you have a lot of sieves that have about one option, and uh, and that's kind of tough. Um, so it's you know again, um, not every tier list is going to be a bell curve or normal distribution. Um, sometimes the the distribution is going to look a little weird, and I think that's definitely the case with with the archer sieves where. Again, it tends to be a little bit of feast or famine. You either have not a lot going for you, or you actually have some. You the so you have a strong archery range. That being said, that's the tier list. If you agree, disagree, you have any thoughts, right? Definitely leave in the comment below, and I'll you know look forward, right? As I keep going on looking at some of these tier lists, I might actually start doing some new tier list as well. I have a few ideas, so definitely be on the lookout for that. And with that being said, right? I'll uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. And I'm Jimmy James 59 and I'll see you guys out there on the ladder. Peace.